Constructing your life is about much more than just building a bank account. Each week, join real estate entrepreneur and mindset coach Austin Linney as he interviews guests who are constructing their dream lives and impacting the world around them on a daily basis. If you're an entrepreneur or wanting to start a business or you just want to hear motivating stories of how others have overcome the odds, you are in the right place. And now for your host, Austin Linney. Guys, welcome to Construct Your Life. This is Austin Linney here, and I have the honor of having not one, but two guests today. So uh, how are y'all doing? Uh, super excited to have y'all in here. Well, thank you, Austin. Good morning. Good morning, and Austin. It was Thanks honored to have us here, though. Mm -hmm. yeah. So why don't you introduce yourself, um, share who you are, what you're into, and then we'll kind of just go from there. Sounds good. Yeah. Well, Hendra and Mercy, we're based in San Francisco. Um, we are investing in multifamily. Starting is about about 18 months ago. Uh, that's how we started. We came from holding a um, single family home portfolio for about 10 years prior. And, you know, just about two years ago, almost two years ago, we, we, we you know, we decided to jump into multifamily just because we felt like the portfolio that we have is not scalable fast enough to fund our son college tuition. And that's the reason why, you know, we start jumping, looking to multifamily, you know, something that more economical scales. And that's how we got, we get began. And, you know, not, not everybody would uh, believe that maybe you're not, are you investing in the Bay area or are you investing in other markets? No, always Not out of state, all. though. There's no way that it can work. <laughs> Not <laughs> yeah. in the blue state, yes. Yeah. But, 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 but what I love about it is, you know, that's such a scary part for so many people. And, and it, it, what I love about multifamily, and I'm sure you'll talk about this, is, is that it's really a family atmosphere. So just, just because you're in the Bay Area doesn't mean that you can't have somebody boots on the ground or, or you can't go out and visit, right? It, it truly is. Right. Because the due diligence on a process like this is a lot longer than a short than a single Absolutely. That, that's certainly true. I mean, it's all about partnership, right? I mean, our eyes will start getting open up the moment we jump into multifamily because typically in the single family, you and I might be after the same house and then you might be com competing and that's pretty much it. But in a multifamily, it's a little bit different, right? You might be, you and I might be after the same property and then, hey, it, it still could be a possibility we could be a partner up in mm -hmm. some fashion to take down the properties, right? The deal that we are working on right now, we got, we got, we literally call it a cost, coast to coast uh, partnership. Mm -hmm. I got a deal that coming from um, a broker that live in Kentucky. I'm in California. My mother partners in New York, the other partners in Kansas and the property is actually in Kansas and all this. See, I mean, you just blend it all together. It doesn't make any mm -hmm. sense if you're coming in single family, but in multifamily, it perfectly makes sense. And it, it it truly is. I don't know, man. I think there's something fun about that too. It's like you know, like I don't, I don't, I've never like hung out uh, for a long time in Kansas, but it should be a fun weekend to get everybody in together, you know. And I, I think that's what I, I'm sure that's what you noticed uh, moving from single family into multifamily. There's just such a camaraderie. There's such a there's such a great atmosphere about it, you know. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. I mean, it, it just, I mean, Mercy probably can testify. I'll, I like to connect with people, talk to people. So I, I, I have a blast, right, talking mm -hmm. about multifamily. And I don't yeah. know about you, though. You know, you can tell, speak, you know, your experience, multifamily. What do you enjoy the most, I guess? Well, um, in this investing, something that I really enjoy is uh, you have the human touch of it. You can connect with people. You, oh, okay, you know, in the, in the past, you can do Bitcoin, right? Uh, or stock option, you talk with your uh, brokers, but in here it's, it's a little bit different. There is a connection, there is a networking, a networking uh, portion of it. So I really enjoy it, yeah. Mm -hmm. And so just so I paint a whole picture, you we met uh, a couple months ago and we had lunch uh, outside of San Francisco and then we saw each other again in Austin. Um, you, uh, your your wife, Mercy, no longer works for a current job, right? It's totally focused on multi. Yeah. Yeah. We'll, we'll take turn. We'll take turn. So I start first. 
Well, I always want to be, um, you know, start a business. And then last year when Hendra kind of oh, give me a book, Will Barrel Profit book by uh, Jake and Gino Barbaro books, I read about it and I, it makes sense to me. So starting with reading first. Yeah. yeah no, and, yes. and that's how you, and, and uh, Henry, what do you do currently? What's your, what's your day job? So I'm a technology consultant. I've been implementing a software for okay. enterprises. Yeah. And, and we, before we got on, we talked about like this, they've, whatever you want to call it, they've glorified, they've made it seem very attractive. Uh, hey, you know, right. This is just how it goes down guys, right? You buy one building and you retire and you're good. You sit on a beach, right? And that's just, it's just that simple. No. And we have made real estate investing, which can be exciting and can create long-term wealth. It is a process, right? And so, um, I think it's very important that you have a stable work, uh, to make you not work from a place of scarcity and you can just go out and, and purchase assets, right. With your money from your job. That, well, that's exactly the plan, right? I mean, a lot of people are jumping too soon or without any plan, right? I mean, in the reality, can real estate make you wealthy and then retire your, from your W2 job? Obviously, but it takes time. It doesn't really happen overnight. I mean, well, I've seen a lot of people say, hey, I want to get a business. I want to buy a business. Forget about real estate. Just buying a business that can replace my income right away. I said, like, that's doable. What's your plan? Because you're going to take time to scalable your, your business to begin with. And same thing with real estate too. I mean, in reality, you got a cash flow, but how much is your, you know, your monthly expenses going to be? It's like 3,000, 4,000. Then you start building up the plan that like that. I mean, if you can't do it yourself for a night, then grab a partner or work with somebody else. Like we, we happen to be a, you know, a working husband and wife as a team that we do have that kind of plan that I'm planning still to keep my W2 job for the time being. And while Mercy can jump into full time and enjoy the, the benefit of being a real estate professional and then crafted the plan that way. I mean, we took, at least we plan right now, our plan is going to take at least about three years before we can yeah. go full time entirely. Mm -hmm. And I, I coach a lot of young guys and I have a kid out of Canada that I coach who's an entrepreneur and he's got a company and it's a clothing apparel company. It's great, right? Yep. But I said, how long is that going to take? Eight to 12 years? Like, what are you going to do in the meantime? And he was like, well, both of my parents are agents have kind of grown up around it the whole life. I said, well, why don't you just be an agent? And he was like, okay. Like, and I'm like, there's avenues in inside of real estate that can generate money while you're creating long-term wealth on the back end. Right. And I think that's, what's so important is, is when I first got in, I was like, Oh yeah, just go for it. And I'm like, well, let's, like you said, let's plan it out. Let's make sure that we have stable income, especially with everything that's going on in the world. We don't know where this is going to go. We we've seen what's happened in the Bay area in a short amount of time with the working from home yeah. and stuff. And I think you have to be prepared. And so many times people just, I don't want to say they talk negatively, but they're like, my job, my job. And I'm like, yeah, but your, like, your job is putting food on the table for your family. So like, you know, let's not like bastardize the job and let's understand that if you have a job and you take 40% yeah. or 30% of that job and you invest it in assets, paying you money, maybe you retire five years earlier. Isn't that the plan? That That's always the plan, right? And then plus think about it like, you got a multiple stream of income as you have one, you keep building up more multiple stream of income. And a lot of people think like, I just want to have real estate to replace it. And that's it. But there are many different ways that you can build up. And then that way, then you got to solve like a, you know, um, like a different tr in different work stream or, mm -hmm. you know, a stream. Right. And then that way, then one is dried up a little bit. You can crank up the other one or because it's always going to be the, the chance of entrepreneurship. Right. So always yeah. you got to evolve. From there. And I, I think it's important. I want to highlight it so people understand when they're listening. Like, so you said uh, 18 months, 19 months, you've been in messing in multifamily, give or take, right? You, you give or take, yeah. Okay. And I know we sat down and had breakfast. So you told me, I mean, how many, now granted, you're not, you're not, you know, full ownership of these apartments, but how many apartment units have you invested in since then? I got about like 900, a little over 900 okay. now. 
Yeah. And see, what I'm trying to say is the only reason why you were able to invest in that is because of your W two job, the money that you had created beforehand, Absolutely. right? Right. And, yeah. and and maybe down the road you'll you'll pull off uh, one by yourself or you'll syndicate it or stuff like that. But what I want to talk about for the next couple of minutes is when you when you didn't have those apartments, right? And now we're here at 900, and you're working on two more deals. Name me three things that were easier than you thought and name me three things that were harder than you thought before you even started if you're here to there i think the, the easier part is looking at the numbers right i mean i think as you go along you start the number makes sense the toughest one i would probably say the mindset mm -hmm. i mean uh our first deal when we look in the deal like you know everybody said like I want to get a, you know, take down 100 plus units, my first deal, which is great, by the way. But the mindset is sometimes not quite there yet, right? It takes a leap of faith. You got to know, I mean, whether we like it or not, I mean, the number always going to look good on the paper. Mm -hmm. But in reality, the moment you jump on it, that's where it scare you off. Like, just think about, like, you know, jumping off the plane, right? Hey, everything looks good. The parachute is going to work 100% of the time. But the moment that you're at the edge of the airplane ready to jump, that's when you start like, uh-oh, you know, I'm, I'm really ready. I mean, this is a great, really great altitude or what happened my, my parachute doesn't open up, right? Thing like that, right? Everything's about mindset. And that's always the challenge that we found. I don't know about you, at least for me, that's, that's what I feel. I think it's... Um Something that I really appreciate from Hendra is he share uh, what is his plan. Then when he share what his fear, uh, you know, being vulnerable as an entrepreneur is okay. Then me as a wife, I can help him to support whatever he needs, you know. But if he doesn't tell me, I have no idea. <laughs> yeah. Dude, y'all are making me so happy right now because you know all I want to talk about is mindset. And I was just talking this with a client the other day like this morning, right before this, a coaching client, we as men, I'm just going to talk about men. We as men are like, I don't understand what my, my wife doesn't understand my plan to like quit my job and live on a beach and I'm going to invest. And I'm like, maybe you haven't communicated properly. Right. And we want to take on all this pressure. And what, what your husband did instead is he said, this is what I'm very scared of. And you said, no, I respect that. But let's yeah. talk about well, my big issue with America right now is we, we operate too much on emotion instead of facts, yeah. right? Oh, and nice. if you operate on facts, look, look, perfect example. My mentor called me yesterday and he has a fund looking for billion dollar deals. They're trying to buy 60 and 80 and $100 million deals. And when I heard that, I was like, what a mindset to have to just, but here's the deal. They're not dealing with emotions. If this on paper looks like an asset that we put $60 million in and we're going to get this much back, we're okay with it. And, but by him telling you, like, this is what I fear. Look, and let's just be honest. A lot of times women are more uh, level headed than men. And we let our emotions get the best of us can say, yeah. you know, this is what we're going to do. Cause we're creating a future for our, uh, our son. And I think that's what excites me about when you see a marriage that works like that. And it's a working in tandem to create, a common goal would you when you agree no absolutely i mean the when we started jumping to multifamily, i literally asked mercy like look i can never do it by myself i need you to be part of it because this is not <clears throat> you know this is not just only buying a single family in the past she was never interested in, in the real estate to begin with though and then um basically her mantra is like buy it as long as we're not losing money, I'm good, right? Mm -hmm. And it's just basically trusting me. But now we're buying a multifamily. I, I literally told her, like, this is just like a buying a business. You're going to know how to operate it. You're going to underwrite it. We need to know who's our customer and how we force appreciation from there. So I really need your help to tag team together and, then, you know, as part of the team. And that's how we begin. And, and something I want to touch on, because you know I love the mindset stuff, and we'll probably stay here for a while, is what would you say to those guys out there that are switching to single family or they're starting investing in multifamily? I feel like, especially in the multifamily space, because there are so many aspects to it, I feel like there can almost be like too much learning, 
like where you're just like not taking action, but you're just like always at the meetups, always listening to the podcast, but you're not really like putting the plan into action. Is that something that you've seen over time? It's like just kind of you just have to get in there sometimes. Yeah, you just jump in the water, right? I mean, it's an ABC, always be connecting. Mm -hmm. That's where you need to connect and then see where you can add value because that's how you create a partnership. That's how you learn about, you know, the best way for me to learn is always somebody else's experience. If you can leverage their somebody else's experience, that's how you grow and grow faster that way. You don't have to jump it right away, but but at the same time, try to add value to them, right? I mean, in our philosophy, there's a three T. You got a time, talent, and treasure that you can always add to other people. And a lot of people think like, oh, I only have, I don't have any knowledge to begin with. And that's not really true. I mean, what do you know? You know, maybe you're good in connecting with broker. You're, you're good in an acquisition, right? That's a value that you can bring to, you know, to a person that you connect with. Maybe you have the time in the world that you can help become the boots on the ground, or checking on the properties, or maybe a treasure. Treasure doesn't necessarily have to be your own money, your own capital. Be, be, maybe you're connected with uh, high network people that you able to leverage that connection and helping out each other. Right? Mm-hmm. Th- that's all the thing that you trying to connect with people and add value. And then that's how you grow. And then that's how the multifamily can, business that you can jump into. I love that. That's I'm going to steal that. That's really good. I like that a lot. I'm going to, I'm going to pull out that clip and just play it for everybody. So let's talk about the mindset to part, what you clicked on. How have you cultivated a mindset for both of y'all that allows y'all to, to be able to pull the trigger on these deals or more importantly, like I I find y'all to be two of the most lovely people to be around. (laughs) Like, I'm sure you don't have all your amazing days, like everybody's, you know, a human, but I, I, I find it to be so positive, right? And so uplifting and you're just happy to connect and you're loving the game of like connecting and networking. So talk about the journey on that because, you know, you when we had breakfast, you shared so much wisdom and your point of view on life, both of y'all is just so amazing. So talk about, did that start with personal development? Where did you find that? Kind of where did that whole thing stem from? Uh, well, um, I think um, in my opinion that when we start something, it never been on the right time, right? Always been something happened. But the most important thing is just uh, take one action a day. You know, you mentioned to you mentioned to us that um, you know, with, with the multifamily, you have to keep learning, you have to be connecting everything. Until today, you know, every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I schedule myself to hear a podcast. And then Tuesday and Tuesday and Thursday, I have to read an article. So every day I have to read 15 minutes about a lot of books um, and then connecting with the, uh, with the coach and everything. So um, never been in the perfect time, but the most important thing is keep doing it. You know, move, you know, my coach, uh, we have a, a, a few coaches uh, mentioned to me that um, move the needles, move the needle. So, so that is kind of a, you know, it's, it's in my image that am I moving a needle today? Mm-hmm. I love that. It's all about progressive mindset, right? I mean, it's, and in Simon Sinek, this is an infinite game. I mean, you, you will never arrive anyway, but this is a journey. If you enjoy the process, the success, it will come by itself. Right. The most important thing is like, you know, enjoying the process, small little things that you do, uh, just make, make, you know, make sure that you improve on the daily basis. Because a lot of people, they got buy out because of this shiny object syndrome. Like, oh, I want to get a thousand units. I got 3000 units. That's great. But hey, why don't we start with two, three, four and grow from there? Because you grow as you learn and you grow yourself. And, and then that's how you, you grow as a human being too. Small little things will make a big days, right? Small little tweak. 100%. And I look at a simple thing as like I've lost like 60 pounds, you know, like almost 70 pounds, right? Like that doesn't happen. Like I decided on Tuesday and then Wednesday I lost. Like it's been a two-year process. But it's those little markers that you hit every now and then that keep you going. And 
what I've found, and this is the number one thing I'm working on because a lot of the young kids have no patience, which I'm just as guilty oh, yeah. of it, is how do we create games, like games in our week that allow us to take five seconds to relish in the big wins, right? You're never going to yep. be to where you want to be. But I have a friend, John, out of uh, North Carolina who does multifamily, a couple different things. And he writes on his board after every day because he has like three jobs, right? Like a podcast, all these things. So he writes every day like small little wins. And he said he'll go through the whole week and he's like, man, I didn't do anything. And then he looks up at the board and he's like, dude, I had a great week, right? And so I think the issue is, and this is something I'm working on with my clients and myself too. You set these huge goals. Like I want a thousand units. But what is the goal for 30 days? Like, what is the goal for 10 days? It's going to keep, you know, I, I read a Ed Milet inter, uh, neuroscience guy, and he said that we actually get more dopamine from the pursuit of a goal than the actually obtaining the goal, right? That's but, right. In, but in order to get those things, we got we to gotta celebrate little clicks and to mm -hmm. keep that motivation and keep that excited. You know, I did a rant the other day and I love it. It's my new soapbox is I think we as adults have taken all the fun out of life, you know, like, yeah, mm -hmm. we want to create our goals and yeah, we want to do these things, but like, let's have a little fun on the way. Like this doesn't have to be, it's not like we're doing brain surgery here. We're buying apartments, you know? And so yeah. I, I, you know, so what do you do as a couple or as a, as a group with your multifamily guys, what do you do to celebrate? Because that's the issue, isn't it? That's the issue that drives me wild about multifamily. You can go six months, a year without doing a deal. So how do you celebrate wins? How do, what do you all do to, to make sure that you stay on track? I mean, for Mercy, is listening to podcasts. And, um, and for me personally, I, I like to connect with people. I try to make it a habit, like trying to connect with new people on a weekly basis. Mm -hmm. um, you know, sometimes it doesn't have to be necessarily related to real estate because there's a time that you're probably not going to be able to meet person. Like, I mean, in the beginning of COVID, I mean, I, I cannot really meet people. But, hey, maybe it's a simple, simple thing, just listening to a podcast or reading something, reading even reading an article, right? That's something that you can share with other people. Because the idea is, again, my, our mantra is like, how, how, how can we add value to people? So any small little thing that we experience, that we learn, we can share to other people and we learn from each other, for us, it's a big win already. Mm -hmm. So a small little thing like that. Yeah, I love that. Uh, Austin, uh, to, to celebrate our win, uh, to your question, is we, we love to involve um, the small win with our with our family so they know what's going on. You know, they, they look at me that you don't have a job, you look busy, <laughs> what are you doing <laughs> So, That's a good point. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> you know, um, let them know. Hey, this is what we have. We invite them to a, a lunch or dinner. You know, something small, but we involve with our family. You know, my our parents. It's so weird that you said that because I was about to think like, do you do something with your son and do you do something with your family? Uh, because because what's interesting, right? Is I'm going to use it from my context, not anybody else's. When I got sober from alcohol, I was like, dude, just get sober, like get sober. And you're like pecking them, right? Like it's the same way you do with your family, like invest in real estate. I swear it's going to be great. Right. But what you realize is that the true definition, the true definition of leadership and how you show somebody the way is just by leading from example. Right. And as you quit your job and as you invest more and more in real estate, I would imagine there's going to be family members or friends go, what are you doing? right? What, what's going on? How are you creating this? And there is so much fulfillment out of showing somebody this new tactic, right? Like, because me and you and us are in real estate 24 seven, and it's what we live. Like, we think that everybody's doing this, but when really like a lot of people aren't doing it, right? And so if you can give them an option to invest in a deal, or, or something like that, I would imagine that your son gets like maybe he doesn't understand everything that's going on, but I'm sure that, you know, he listens to things. And I would imagine that, you know, when he's older, certain those things are going to stick, right? Yeah. He already got a little bit of real estate bug, though, even though every now and then he got sick and tired of it for us talking about real estate. But he, he got it, though. I, I think like about... You told me a story, right? What was that story? How old is he? 
He's he's, he's turning thirteen in about thirteen, dude. He's an agent already. We're good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, what I, happened? You told me some story. So, I remember that. So earlier this year, I think he was he was asking for van shoes, the skateboard shoes, right? I told him like I'm gonna I'm not gonna, I'm, not, I'm gonna buy it for you, but I want you to read a book. It's to reach that for that fourteens mm-hmm. and. You know, motivation is a great way, right? When, when we incentivize him with, with that, and he's like, he read it cover to cover over the weekend, which never happened before. And then I, I was testing him like, hey, you read the book. Tell me about it, what you learned. And he just simplified, you know, the, you know, the summary of it. Just saying like, asset is something to put money in your pocket, liability taking money out of your pocket. Then what is your shoes then? Well, it's a liability, but I want it, right? Mm-hmm. I said, all right, promise is a promise. I'll buy it for you. You know, and then, and then a few months later, he struck a conversation with, with his teacher. His teacher's talking, oh, you want to get wealthy, then buy Amazon stock. And he told me the story on, on the way home, you know, and said, like, my teacher told me about that, buying Amazon stock. And then what do you think? I, I think it's a lie. Like, what do you think is a lie? Well, because when you buy Amazon stock, you give a control to the company of your money. And you have no control over it. I said, like, then what do you do with your money then? What should you do? Well, buy real estate. Why? Because you have more control over it. You can create wealth that way and grow. It's, for me, it's like blowing my mind. Like, I finally reading the book, just dawning on him, and it works. And then he, he obviously he's interested to invest in real estate now. And then it's like, yeah, but I, I told him, like, if you get a certain amount of money and I'll, I'll let you in, involve in my deals. It's like, but I don't have it, though. Well, you know, think about it. What what do you what do you do? I can flip shoes, and then he start flipping shoes, and he in he borrowed my money actually to invest in shoes. <laughs> no, 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 no. Okay, first of all, I'm gonna meet your son. He's a gangster. I love him. But dude, I just released an episode. I'm gonna send it to you. I just released an episode Monday or like the last week. Yeah, he's a guy out of Portland. I met who started flipping shoes at 16. Oh, wow. He, he's now 29. He's on his fourth house. He's selling shoes for 20 to 50K a shoe. So he has a YouTube channel with a million, with 100,000 followers. And it was all from flipping shoes. But what he noticed is that, is that people in his family were around for holidays and they weren't working. And he goes, wait, you're not working. What are you doing? We own... KFCs, Taco Bells, McDonald's. And he goes, oh, so real estate creates passive income. Okay, that's great. I'm going to take the money from my shoes and buy, and buy real estate. So what I'll do for y'all, what I'll do for you is I'll set up a call between him and your son. How much will he love that? Oh, oh he's going to love it. He's going to love it, though. Okay, yeah. and he's always been connecting. <laughs> there you go. Good. No, I love it, man, because I'm telling you, when COVID hit and, and we had all the riots and we had all this stuff and I started dipping in more to my coaching, I thought to myself, I said, how do you make the biggest impact, Austin? And, and I realized when I was lost, was 17, 16, because I was so, I had a photographic memory. School wasn't anything for me. I didn't like it. And I, I felt like I got lost. So I thought to myself, okay, so how do you do it? Okay, you go affect kids, right? And so what we want to do is create an after school program where they come to the office and we teach them business and read rich dad, poor dad and stuff like that. And so I think that's the way to, and I'm not, look, I'm not saying they have to be in, entrepreneurs, but you yeah. just have to give them another option, right? That's all we're looking to do. Expand the yeah. mind. Yeah. 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 I always tell them like, Hey, you know, whether, you know, I'm most hoping that we're going to college, but if you're not, I want you to become the entrepreneur, the best entrepreneur, in whatever study that you're going to do. That that's that's um yeah, yeah. And you and you're and you're you you know you're basically teaching them as simple as this. Here's the thing, right? But this is what he told me that's super important, and you're gonna share this with your kid, and he's totally gonna get it. He has a he has an object that people obsess about, and when I mean they like, there's a rich people. He said people fly in on planes; they'll just hand them fifty thousand and fly out. So you have a commodity that people want. It doesn't yeah. matter what the economy is. It's a rare economy. So then you can take that, the profit margin, and then, and he, he has the same thing with Pokemon cards, all these things. Like it's, dude, I'm telling you, man, yeah. 
it, it's very interesting the world we live in these days and what you can do and you know you meet these 13 year old 14 year old kids that already have businesses right mm -hmm. and i'm like thinking to myself like what my favorite thing to do this is what i do when i really want to mess with the young entrepreneurs the young investors because i have i have so i have three house two houses whatever you want to call it i have a bunch of equity in the houses i tell them that i'll sign over the deeds on my houses with the equity in it like 300k and i'll start from zero if i could be 20. Mm. and they'll go what and i go if i know what i know now i said i'll be there in like a year so like that's what they don't get you have time and when you start at 16 and you have a, a, a you know, an, a, an overflated life insurance policy at 18. You can, you can be retired at 30. Like that's a real that's scenario. You're right. Yeah. 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 And I would imagine that as parents, right? Because I don't know how your parents grew up, but I know that y'all are hard workers and you, you've been, you know, a W2 employee forever. I would imagine that the maximum amount of joy was him telling you about the Amazon stock. I can't imagine you must've been glowing as a father. Oh, we, we are. I mean, we are, that, that's our proudest parent, you know, moment, you know, as a parent, right? I mean, yeah. it works. And, and, you know, it's one of those things where, yeah, man, it would be really cool to give them like, you know, 0.5% of a multifamily deal and be like, you know, now you're going to do these jobs. And man, if he saw a return from that, you, he'd be like, oh, this is crazy, you know? And I just get so much joy out of like teaching them that there's ways to, there's so many options available. And so on a day-to-day -day basis to create this mindset and to create these things, what are you doing besides listening to podcasts? You know, do you prescribe to the miracle morning? You know, all those things like what are you doing on a day-to-day -day basis to, to, to keep the mindset, you know, sharp as possible? I mean, for me personally, my, and not necessarily a miracle morning, but you know, I'm doing a lot of devotion, right? I'm a, we are a faith-based couple, faith-based family. So we do devotion, um, you know, reading the word, the word of the Lord. So it's just basically, that's what I do. That's where I find my calmness, you know, and finding a focus and a purpose and hope right? and faith, right? That's how I, I grow it on a daily basis. That's what mm -hmm. my anchor on a daily For sure. basis. For sure. Mine is... Uh... Uh, I like to do a journaling, you know, when we want to lose weight, when we want to accomplish something, you know, we put down on the, you know, on the paper. I do have this uh, um, uh, intentional journal that I purchased from Bigger Pockets, brand journal, I, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, so I write it down, um, my daily um, activities a night before. So I think that uh, the fundamental is to capture uh, my mind before it flies, you know. So journaling and then plan it. Yeah, I wouldn't know anything about that. <laughs> yeah, but 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 so I before I while we wrap this up here, I want to spend the last couple of minutes. Somebody is new to multifamily, or they're just thinking about getting started. Give me five areas or five things should they run out and get a coach right away like what are the things that they should be doing uh for the next six months if they want to move into multifamily? i would say you know before you do any investing invest in yourself whether it's through mm -hmm. mindset education um or relationship a lot of people a lot of time people i want to i want to invest i want to invest but they forget that the first thing they need to do to get to invest in themselves um, get educated, right? I mean, get a coaching if you if you can afford it. Because, but at the end of the day, you got to invest in yourself first mm -hmm. uh, through, through a relationship through somebody else that done it before, right? Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, it's a, it's a, literally a team sport. We're talking about like you know five minutes and above. You got to you got to work with somebody or have a relationship with somebody already done it before. You know, whether through a coach or or seasoned investor, and learn from them. Mm -hmm. And it just that's my from my our experience, though. Yeah, and for me, it's a focus on your health. Um, increase your energy level. Um, take care of yourself physically. If you are sick or your mind is foggy, cloudy, um, it's really hard to move faster. Mm -hmm. No, I agree. And any any time that 
somebody comes to me or they're not exactly where they want to be, I said, it starts with health. Like we, you know, I, we discount water. Like, right. I know it sounds like, but it's so ridiculous. Like this thing that makes up like 60% of our body and we don't pay any attention to it. Right. And what I try to tell people is like, look, as far as working out, like, I don't need you to be like, you know, I don't need you to go Michael Jordan on it. Like you don't got to go crazy, but like 30 minutes a day, 20 minutes a day, walking, whatever, you're just creating that habit of this is what I do and it'll show up in other areas of your life. I know that for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. And Austin, can I challenge um, uh, the audience also? Sure. If you want to be a multifamily uh, entrepreneur, entrepreneur um, run a half marathon. Oh, I like it. Yeah. I like it because that's commitment. Commitment is a long range. You have mm -hmm. to practice. It just it doesn't happen in one night. And during the the race, you need somebody crowd. And the hardest always the last uh, one mile. Mm. Oh, she just she just brought the house down. I love that. Oh my goodness, that's so good. I didn't even think about something like that. No, it's it's a pure mindset, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. we both of us did it, and then and then the moment we did it, we just like too bad we finished it i mean yeah mm -hmm. it's, it's clearly overcome your mindset and then the way you think like oh something that's not attainable is it's achievable now mm -hmm. and then you look down like i think multi-family i can do it because yeah. the mind is that well right? it's funny that you say that so right now i'm on 64 63 hour fast right now Ooh. it's the longest i've ever been um i've only done 24 hours before then but what I do, right, and granted, there's health benefits from this, of course, yeah. but what it shows me more is that it truly is about your mind. It truly is about setting yourself up. And when you, and this is what we're talking about here, guys, everybody that's listening, when you get around multifamily investors who own 3,000 units, when you get around people that are doing big things, I always like to set ridiculous, like hard goals in front of me like one big goal at the at the start of the year because I want to do something to force myself out of my comfort zone. And I think that's what you're saying about the half marathon. It, it really is a, as a planning. And then when you get done, you're like, hey, that wasn't as bad as I thought it was. Let's go buy some properties. There you go. There you go. <laughs> yeah, I love it. So how can people find out about you? How can they get a hold of you uh, and all that stuff? Well, they can connect with us through our website, ideaboxcapital.com, um, and also through Facebook. Uh, I can provide you my Facebook link, uh, Hendra Tambunan, H-E-N-D-R-A, Tambunan, T-A-M-B-U-N-A-N. Love to connect with people and help them get started in multifamily too. They're interested. No, I love it. And I just want to thank you all so much for your time, guys. Guys, if you enjoyed this episode, make sure you share it to your friends, and we really appreciate y'all for listening. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you for listening to Construct Your Life with Austin Lenny. If you enjoyed this episode, be sure to rate, review, subscribe, and pay it forward by sharing with a friend. Most importantly, take this opportunity to start constructing your life by taking immediate action on what you learned. For show notes, resources, and more information on one-on-one -on -one coaching with Austin, visit constructyourlifepodcast.com.